Hi folks, this is the continuation of the previous video on block diagrams. In this case we're going to go through an example. And this is going to be a DC motor. So let's talk about a DC motor and draw a block diagram and then we'll do some reduction. And this is a relatively complicated block diagram, although it's a simple system. And so I think it'll show you what I mean by drawing these and how they're going to help. So if we consider a DC motor, and at some point when we talk, to, uh, talk about sensors, we'll talk about how this works. But you can just trust me for the moment that we're going to have an electrical equation of motion, a mechanical armature equation of motion, a mechanical load equation of motion, a torque constant interconnection equation, a back, e back EMF interconnection equation, and then two gear ratio equations. And again, those are interconnects. And so depending on usage, we define the inputs and outputs. And I'm going to say that in my application, I want to apply an input voltage and have it generate an output speed. That's my definition. You could do it with an output of um, position instead. You could do it with an output of acceleration. You could do it with an input of current. But for my case, I want an input of voltage and an output of speed because I'm going to do speed control. So. Assuming that you know how to write the equations, which you will, then these are the different blocks you're going to get. And so if we read these from right to left, if we start with the armature electrical EOM, I sub L, which is going to be the current in the armature, is 1 over LAS plus RA multiplied by the quantity VN minus VB. The armature mechanical EOM is going to be that, uh, that's a capital omega, which is what we use for speed. So the speed of the armature is going to be 1 over JMS plus BM, that's the um, armature mechanical component, multiplied by the quantity T sub M, the torque generated by the motor, minus T sub L comma M, which is the torque applied to the load as seen at the motor. And I say as seen by the motor because we have to include our gear ratio. And then there's also the load, and the load is going to have a, uh, in this case I've drawn the arrows going the other way and that's because it's going to simplify things later. Um, you notice that this is also the inverse of what we had for the uh, armature mechanical portion. It's just JLS plus BL, not one over. And that's because of the direction of the arrows. But in this case I've got an input of uh, speed of the load and an output of the torque. So we're going to read it from left to right. So the torque of the load as seen by the load is equal to JLS plus BL times the input speed, which is omega sub L, the speed of the load. I have my slides out of order. I apologize. So here's our interconnection equation. Like I said, I've got two gear ratios. And again, I've drawn them going opposite directions um, in this case because of their gear ratios. They're not actually inverses. Check my math. But uh, the speed of the motor goes through gear ratio to get the speed of the load, and the torque of the load as seen at the load goes through uh, gear ratio to get the torque of the load as seen by the motor. And then we also have this torque constant and back EMF constant, and I'll define these for you when we talk about motors. Uh, but the torque constant says that the um, torque generated by the motor is going to be the torque constant multiplied by the current through the motor. And the back EMF constant says the voltage applied, the back EMF voltage V sub B is going to be the back EMF constant times the speed of the armature, which is again uh, omega sub m. So if I then put all of these components together, you get something like this. How did I know to put them together like this? Experience. Um, when you try to put them together like this the first time, it's kind of rough. So, But I knew what the equations were, so I was able to draw individual blocks, one, one block with maybe a summing junction for every equation. And then it's just sort of fitting them together into something that makes sense, where, remember, I defined my input was voltage and my output was speed. So on the left, I've got V sub N as my input. On the right, I've got omega sub L, which is my speed of the load, as my output. Now, if you had it in a different order, you had some different sort of diagram going on, you could probably get it to this. But assuming that you got it to this, then we want to say, well, this is great and all, but I can't really do a lot with it. What I really want is I want one block representing one equation uh, so that I can go directly from V sub n, the speed, to omega sub L, or sorry, V sub n, the voltage applied to omega sub L, the speed. So I need to do some reduction. And you look at this and you say, well, this doesn't exactly match what I've got. Um, 
There's already been one step of reduction that I didn't mention where I took the torque constant, KT, and I took the um, armature EOM and I jammed those two together, which is why I've got KT over LAS plus RA. That was just a series connection. That was the only thing I could do initially. But now I have these loops, and so I have to do something more complicated to get rid of the loops. So if you look at this, think to yourself, how am I going to get these loops isolated? The upper loop can't be isolated because it's got that pickoff point at omega sub m. The bottom loop can't be isolated because it has that um, summing junction with the torques. So I have to do something in order to rearrange this so that I can look at one loop at a time that has no connection to anything else. So what do you think we're going to do? Hopefully you answered. If not, I'm going to show you. Um, here's all our pieces again. So I'm just going to move the pickoff point for the back EMF constant. So let me flip back one and you can see it again. Here's the here's the uh, starting point with the pickoff point there between the load mechanical side or the uh, armature mechanical side and the gear ratio R and I'm just going to move it. Now when I move it I have to introduce that 1 over R because what I said is that instead of pulling uh, omega sub m down to back, back, EMF, back EMF constant, now I'm pulling omega sub l down, and omega sub l is r times omega sub m. So if I have r times that I'm going to multiply by a 1 over r, so I get back to what I had. But now, now that upper loop doesn't involve the pickoff point. The upper loop can now be closed. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply my um, feedback loop reduction thing, you should go check your book and find the table in there. But the feedback loop reduction, remember, is going to be the feed forward part G over 1 plus G times the feedback part H. Now in this case, it's a little different looking because it's upside down from what you had. But the feed forward part is going to be that uh, part in the middle and the top part is going to be your feedback part H. So if I do that, and I've moved the pickoff point back just to get it back to what I wanted it originally then I've got a new block 1 over quantity JM plus R squared JL times S plus the quantity BM plus R squared BL and that takes care of the entire loop. Well that's nice. Once I've got it in this form then it's just another loop on the bottom and that R hanging off on the side. Now I can do exactly the same thing and if I close that, that uh, remaining loop then it's a series connection with R. So here we go. If I close that remaining loop it's a much more complicated equation, but it's still just one equation in series with an R. And if it's in series, I can multiply that R in. And that gives me one, sorry, one block between V in and theta sub L. So this one block gives me the equation between the input voltage and the output speed. And so I've taken a relatively complicated system, and you saw I had, again, three equations of motion, and was it four interconnection equations? So seven equations total, and now I've reduced it to one equation. You can do it using algebra, and it's just as easy if you want to do algebra, but again, the picture, I think, makes it a little simpler because it gives you kind of some, some guidelines on where you should start, and it allows you to figure out what changes you need to make initially. So this is the model of a DC motor. Now, you could simplify it a little bit uh, in terms of... Um, multiplying top and bottom by some of those chunks and so you could clear it out and this would give you a second order system um, which we can then make some additional approximations that we'll talk about in our actuator section on how to reduce this to a first order system for ease of use but there we go that's a DC motor